On my recent videos I've been talking about battery drains and one thing that I noticed is I don't know if I completely showed exactly how to set up a voltmeter to actually check the parasitic drain so that you can follow easily. Just a couple of things you're going to need. You will need a voltmeter, um, preferably one that has the min-max setting like this one does right here. This is a fluke meter, although I think you can get uh, other versions of meters a lot cheaper. Just it is nice when they have the min-max, otherwise you have to sit and watch the meter. And then I also have a 10 foot retractable test lead, which this is just, it's got a positive and negative on it, and it's telescoping, and I think that's just a Harper Freight one, which uh, we gotta love that sore. Most of the time when you get your meter, you have your negative and your positive, right? This is for your voltage and ohms, and then you have a, a milliamp or a microamp, and then you have an amp tab, and I'm going to go ahead and move that over to the amp setting. Alright, I just turned my meter off. I'm going to want to go to my amp setting, or this is also milliamp, but it is also for amperage also. You just have to check and match up your settings here with your settings on your gauge. You can see right now it's reading 0 .001. The next step is very simple. Just take your positive lead and put one end red with the test lead and the negative with the test lead, right, and that's going only on one side of my test lead and then I have my other two over here to be attached to my battery and to my ground. So there's my negative, I have my negative here, I'm going to go ahead and attach that to the top post of the battery, depending on what style battery you have, you may have to connect it right onto the terminal or onto the wiring. Alright, now I need to find a chassis ground. So you need to find a stud or some kind of location where you have a good continuity to ground. And on this particular vehicle I have this stud sticking out right here. I can just go ahead and put that on and I'm set up. So I have one here, one on a chassis ground. I have that going to my retractable test lead, to my power and ground, and then it's going to go through my meter. Right now, I'm not going to get any amperage reading right now, as you can see, because I'm still connected to the chassis ground, and the electricity takes the path of least resistance, so it's actually going to go through the chassis ground and not through my meter. So what I need to do is disconnect my chassis ground right here. I'm going to take this uh, 13, I believe it is, nut off, and I'm going to move my ground away, and now the voltage will, voltage amperage will go through my test lead through my meter and I'll be able to get a reading now of what the actual drain is on this battery. Alright, loosened up the 13. I'm going to just take the 13 off and you just move your ground Oop, don't want to drop that into that battery well. It's deep down there. It's a lot to take apart. Okay, move that out of the way. And now I'm going through my test lead and through my meter to my chassis ground and my reading now is 0 0.047 or about 50 milliamps and that is what you want to see. You want to see 50 to 80 milliamps. 80 is a little on the high end. I don't like to see 100 milliamps. I've seen 100 milliamps. It will drain your battery um, within a week. Your battery might be 50% if it was 100% to start with. So if you have your meter here, now you can set it to min-max and you can monitor for wake-ups if you have a min-max. Now if you have a drain, you would actually see like 0 .100 or 1 1.2, which I can demonstrate in a second. So what I'm basically going to do is wake up the car, but what you don't want to do when you wake up your car to recheck your values, you want to make sure that you don't want to leave your ground off. You don't want to go through your meter with a high amperage spike. That can actually pop the fuse in your meter. So I'm going to go ahead and just loosely put my ground back on, which will allow the voltage to go through the chassis ground instead of through the meter, so that when I wake the car up, now that I have the key, I can wake the car up, right? So my lights flashed, my fuel pump turned on, it's still running. Okay, there we go. I'll wait for that to shut off before I disconnect this. And then we should see a big change in the amperage drain. Okay, so 
Now my car is awake. It was actually 1.2. It's already gone back down to 0.385. So that's a 385 milliamp drain currently on this car, but it is awake. Keep in mind most cars need at least 30 minutes to an hour to go to sleep. Cars do have a sleep cycle. Now one other thing I want to mention when you're setting up for a parasitic draw test is close the latches like on your glove box or trunk or doors and I'll show you how to do that. It's pretty simple. All right, I'm going to unlock the trunk. Right, so you see my amperage spike, 1.7. So if my trunk is open, my lights are on. That's not very helpful if I'm actually checking for a parasitic draw. So you want to make sure you close your latches. Very simple, take a screwdriver and go ahead and just close the latch. And then your lights will be off and basically the car thinks that the trunk is closed. That's important. Now you can do this on the door too. So you open your door up and you do the same thing on your striker right here. Take your screwdriver and close the latch. I don't want to push the door back. Alright, so just take a screwdriver and close that. Now your car door, your car thinks the door is shut correctly and that is important. With the door latch you now have access to the glove box so I always like to open the glove box and on this particular car I do have a light and that light is on if my glove box is open so I went ahead and just I popped the light out that way I didn't have a draw that I was not looking for so coming back to my meter right now I currently have 375 and I'm just gonna reset it you reset it by pressing and holding the min max which shuts off the recording which I still have 375 so I would have to wait half hour an hour for the car to go to sleep then you come out and you press your min max button and what that's going to do is record the lowest and the highest and you just hit the button to scroll through that's the max it saw recently that's the minimum and it gives you an average and you just press and hold to reset so that's how you do a parasitic draw test which is a really helpful test if you're having a battery drain you put a new battery in and your battery is dead again now on this particular car, I removed fuse 45, what was it, 43, 43, right here, which is this 5 amp fuse which feeds the instrument cluster. So that's how you do a parasitic draw test, which is a really helpful test if you're having a battery drain, you put a new battery in and your battery is dead again. Now on this particular car, I removed fuse 45, what was it, 43, 43 right here which is this 5 amp fuse which feeds the instrument cluster so there's my culprit but what I found was if I take that fuse out everything in the instrument cluster works so that's confusing right shouldn't my instrument cluster be dead so most of the time there's multiple feeds to a component so you have to be careful what that fuse does is it actually feeds the OBD2 port which is the onboard diagnostic port which is down here in the corner Right, right here where you'd scan the car or they would do uh, emissions testing and what that fuse does is it enables it to talk to the instrument cluster and that's actually the circuit that's having an issue strangely enough so what I did was just remove the fuse and now my wake up is gone and we just have to keep in mind that when this car goes through emissions you have to put that fuse back in or it will fail and I just had the door open. Now this particular car, even though it does the 200 milliamp spike from the instrument cluster from that OBD2 fuse, I found also ended up having a 600 milliamp spike from another component. And I had disconnected a few components, one of them is behind that panel, as part of my regular testing and I had eliminated a drain that I didn't even know the car had. So I like to actually test drive the car after, reset it up for a parasitic draw test, after I've eliminated what the possible cause could be to rule out other things other than, say, this instrument cluster right here, because I did have another drain on the car. And I'm glad I checked, because otherwise this would have drained the battery down in a, a couple of days for the owner of this vehicle. And uh, he's someone I know, he's a good guy, 
so I didn't want that to happen. This is a new battery that we just put in for him. Some common drains, drains on this uh, BMW that I've seen is the radio. This is an aftermarket radio. I really thought it was going to be the aftermarket radio, but I pulled those fuses from the glove box and that was not it. So I was really surprised. The heater control panel, that's actually a common one also. Either that or the final stage, which feeds the blower motor, can actually cause a drain. And the final stage, which is located um, in the well up under here, uh, on the passenger side is actually a very common cause of a parasitic drain. Lamp modules, that's another cause of a parasitic drain. Um, or what a lamp module, a radio, and a TCU sometimes all have in common is a K bus or an I bus, and that's a communication line between all of those components, and they're talking to each other, and if one of them wakes up, it can wake up all of them, and then they all say hello, and then your parasitic draw spike goes up really high. There is a splice location behind the glove box for that, where you'd have to drop the glove box, take the splice location out, take each pin individually off the comb, and then you can put one on at a time to see which component is causing your wake-ups. That's the only way to find that. Let me show you one other spot that got me once. So on the left side of the trunk on an E46, and these clips, if you have the style, you just put something underneath and pry them up. Yeah, you can pop this out. Alright, take this panel off. Alright, so you have wiring here, and this is actually wiring to add on a CD changer. So here is your, um, your I bus or your K bus wire, right? This white one with red and a yellow tracer. And what happened was there was corrosion in here from a water leak, and the corrosion was grounding across the pins. And it was actually causing the, the car to not be able to communicate properly. Everything was going haywire, and it, it was just from corrosion right in this spot. So if you have anything weird with your, uh, your I-bus or K-bus on an E46, I would definitely take a look at this. You know, this is a um, convertible top, and there's convertible top drains that are up under here and I do have a video on that video on that that I can put together um, I haven't posted it yet and this particular car had that problem and when that happens and the drains can't drain water can pour into your trunk and it can pour into the car the drains are kind of a pain to get to but let me show you the other culprit which is the TCU so obviously this bottom panel comes out nice and easy just slides out the TCU on a convertible E46 is behind this panel back here and this stuff is actually pretty loose. Let's see if I can show you. So you just have to get back here, get this out of the way, this will pull back and there it is right there. This is the telephone communication unit. Here's that pass key that I told other people about in a, in a posting 0761. That's for Bluetooth if the car is equipped. Although nowadays with the uh, Smartphones, they usually don't like it very much. They're not, these are not compatible with uh, current smartphones. And there's my connector that I've disconnected back there. So this TCU is really obsolete. Since it's obsolete, I can go ahead and disconnect it. And that's how I'm going to leave it. And that's going to fix the wake-up that this uh, person had, the 600 milliamp wake-up. So between the two issues, taking the fuse out for the instrument cluster for the OBD2 and disconnecting this uh, TCU, now I've just saved uh, this person, I mean, it's probably almost $1,000 with replacement of the instrument cluster. I mean, this module too, I mean, we might be talking $1,000, $1,500 to fix a car that, you know, again, is a great car to drive, but these are things that you don't necessarily need. So I put my ground back on and just one final note, you want to check a car both locked and unlocked and sometimes after you drive it and sometimes you know just letting it sit and waking it up and opening the door and playing with the electronics. All of those factors could come in play in order for you to recreate the situation that's creating the drain. I'm going to go ahead and lock this and I'm going to monitor it one more time and just make sure everything's good before I put this together and uh, give it back. Thanks for watching. Hope this is helpful. Likes and positive comments are appreciated. And please remember to subscribe.